Today's tutorial is about taking a black and white photograph and adding color back to it, specifically in areas that you want to have colored. I'm starting here with an example of a head and shoulders shot so that you can see quite a bit of detail in the face and the hair and a little bit of the background. Step number one is to turn it into a black and white image. To do that, I come up to the image menu, down to adjustments, and then down to black and white. As I select black and white, it automatically takes the color out for me, but it also gives me some options. Because when you change something to black and white, you're changing all the color values that were in it to shades of gray, sometimes there isn't a good contrast. There's too many middle grays and not enough dark darks and white whites. So that is why you have this slider here. You get to choose. Now I know that in this face, there are quite a bit of yellow and red tones. So watch what happens. If I take this little yellow slider, and if I go to the left, it's going more towards the dark side. And if I go to the right, it's pulling more light tones out of those yellows in the photograph. I can kind of pick somewhere in between maybe. Still gives some good definition in her cheeks and under her eyes, but still is a good contrast from her hair and the background. I can do the same things with the reds. Again, you can see if I go more towards white, it's really blowing out the colors in her face. I don't want too much of that. I don't want to destroy the image, just enhance it a little bit for black and white. So I might bump it up to 83. There aren't very many greens in this photo at all. As a matter of fact, when I adjust the slider, you can't even tell. Same with blues. Same with cyans and magentas. When I like the setting, all I have to do is click OK. And now I have a very nice black and white image to start from. Step two is to create a new layer. That way all of the changes and adjustments I make to this photo only happen on separate layers, not this background layer, the original. To do that, I'm going to pull the layers palette front and center for you to see. First of all, if I look down at the bottom of the layers palette, it gives me a few symbols to work from. Today, we'll need to know this one. This is the new layer symbol. When I click on it, you can see it adds a whole new layer to this image. Anything I do on this layer will not affect this background layer. So after I've created a new layer, I want to come over here to the toolbar, and I'm going to drag it up a little closer here so you can see it. Down here are the color swatches. Black is the foreground, white is the background. I'm not concerned about background at this point, I just want foreground. And right now, I'm concerned about clicking it and choosing a color that I think will go with her skin tone. So, I'll come in here and choose something kind of close. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. For this example, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to be exact. That's pretty close. Okay, so this skin tone color, now we're going to paint it onto her face. I'm going to come up and click on the tool brush and make some adjustments to this brush. So if I click up here after I've ch chosen brush, it gives me options for it. I'm going to set the hardness to around 50. The diameter, depending on how much I need, I don't know, I'll go somewhere in the middle here. That's about how big it will be, maybe a little bit bigger. Color more at one time. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is just paint over her face, not being too careful, because the next step is to go back and erase anywhere where I went outside the lines or covered over something that I didn't want to be skin colored. Right now you'll notice that it looks like I'm just kind of messing up this picture with the paintbrush, but there's a little magic that will happen here in the next step that will totally amaze you as to how this is going to look like real skin. Okay, I think that colors up most of her skin. The next step is to come over to the layers palette, and you'll see I'm in layer one, and you can see where I painted on it. 
I'm going to change this up here by clicking on the layer the way it's painted basically I have all kinds of different options but the one I'm looking for is all the way down here color so basically now I'm taking this layer that I've created and I'm using just the color to apply to the image boom now it looks like the folks the face that was underneath is blending with the colors in the foreground you'll ask me though if this is perfect nope not quite now I want to change a little bit about um, where it kind of goes over the edges. You can see I didn't paint perfectly down here on her chin. It's going over her hair in a few spots. And I definitely don't want her eyes to look like they're yellow. So to do that, I'm going to do something called a layer a mask. Okay, I'm going to click here, add layer mask. And you'll notice that it applies it to the layer that I had created with the face color. And as long as my foreground color is black and white, it will now let me go in here and just use my brush to clean up the edges. It's almost acting as an eraser. I won't take too much time to be detailed, but on yours, you would zoom in and be as specific as possible to get right up to the very edges so that you would make very, very sharp, crisp, clean edges around your skin tones. I can reach size my brush and to do that I know you can't see me but I'm using the square brackets on the on the keyboard that allows me to take away uh, the brush size bigger or smaller okay that wasn't great I probably would go back and adjust that layer later I'm also going to erase out the eyes here take this back to being black and white a little small to get in the corner and I'll do the same thing quickly on the other eye. Like I said, when you're doing this for real and you want this to be a very good picture, you would take your time and make sure these edges are really, really sharp. I would zoom in to make sure I didn't miss anything. The next step is um, to kind of repeat the same process. So now instead of um, doing skin tones, I think I might like to do the hair. She has very nice brown hair, but I think for my example, I'm going to go a little bit crazy. So this uh, requires me to come back over to the layers palette and make another new layer. Click the button. New layer for the hair. Come back over to the colors. Let's find something great like, I don't know, um, purple hair. And I'll pick a nice, bright, vibrant purple color. And make my brush a little bit bigger again. And I'm going to come in here and just swipe in color, this really pretty purple, and cover all the hair that I can find. Now this picture, is her hair is a little bit messy back here. So when I'm doing it for real, I would want to take my time by coming in here and just trying to um, pick out the strands as close as I can to their actual size. So I'll just show you what I would do. I would kind of do this. I'm doing it very quickly for you today because you don't want to watch me painstakingly go through this whole thing. Okay, same thing up here. I'm going to want to be as precise as possible to get this little lock of hair that's kind of coming down by her ear. Right now, I'll just kind of brush over it and go back over it later. Okay, and up here too, there's a little spot of dark hair showing. Oh, and even some back here. I better do that real quick. Okay, so just like we did with the face, we want to apply this blending mode. So drop down and change from normal to color kind of pretty but this you can also play with some different ones I think maybe soft light would be really pretty with this one it kind of looks less fake it has a little bit um, kind of a the darker richer colors in there so that kind of is a nice effect I think I'll leave that and then just like I did on the face I'm gonna click the adjustment layer button excuse me the add layer mask button again making sure my foreground color is black and then 
it acts like an eraser. I can come in around the edges of the hair where I don't want the purple to show outside the edge and it will give me the opportunity to clean it up and make it look very realistic. Now, this will take a little bit of time. Hair is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. If you want it to look really good and really natural, you would take your time. For right now though, as you can see, in a tutorial, I, you don't want to really sit here and watch me painstakingly carve out each one of these hairs. Okay, but that would be the process. Everything else is the same as those first couple of steps. If I want to make her eyes a different color, I'll make a new layer. I'll choose the foreground color that her eyes should be. I think they should be a very pretty blue. Um, somewhere, maybe somewhere about here. And then I will paint over the eyes. And in this case, I'm going to make sure that my paintbrush is almost the exact same size as her pupils. Like that. Apply this blending mode, choosing color, and then using the mask and going back and erasing any pieces that overflowed. The result is a fairly natural looking photograph, has all the subtle shades of skin, all the fine details of hair, all the reflections that come in an eye, and I would even continue with lips. I might go to the background and do the same thing, paint over the areas with a color I want, and create a really nice photograph. I can get crazy like I did here with different colors, or I can go try to be as natural as possible to create the simulation of how an old-fashioned photo would have been taken from black and white and painted painstakingly to look full color. And that is the tutorial for adding color to a monochromatic image.